Boomers, Gen X, Gen Y, Gen Z, Millennials, Strawberry Generation, and Snowflake Generation. Welcome to your podcast next door. Next door. Next door. Next door. Grab yourself a cup of tea and join us on Tea Talk. Presenting the hosts of Tea Talk, Kai and Tiara. Uh, hello and welcome back to the podcast, everybody. Hey guys, welcome back. We hope you are doing well. We have been doing all right so far, I would say, alhamdulillah. Yeah, I think we've been doing great um, amidst whatever that's happening around us. Oh, I... We shouldn't say lah because we might just jinx it. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like low key, our podcast was started because of COVID, oh, and yeah, everything did. we talk about always has COVID in it because <laughs> it's the thing <laughs> we, that we can't affects, run away from it. Yeah, it's like the thing that affects us the most, to be honest. <sighs> um, but yeah, reporting to you not really live from uh-huh. the comfort of our bed. Yes. Um, I'm under the covers right I'm now. I'm at the edge of the bed because uh, that's how exciting this podcast is going to be. Oh, wow, wow, wow. wow. <laughs> so, what is today's podcast going to okay. be about? You know, we have been uh, getting back into our creative mode, mm-hmm. our creator mode, right? And a lot of that has to do with YouTube. Mm-hmm. So, I was just reflecting that day. And I was just thinking about YouTube and how we've both come together using YouTube as a platform to express whatever interest or creativity that we possess. So I was just thinking, let's use this episode to specifically talk about YouTube and how YouTube has made us grow. Right. Is it a very intense topic? I don't think so. No, right? It's okay, right? Yeah, it's fine. So yes, you see, For me, I have my own set of YouTube story, how I got into it in the first place and everything. But for you, you started way back. (laughs) Back when like you were, Mm. what, 7, 18? No lah. Yeah, maybe around 18, 19, I guess. Yeah. So when you were 18, YouTube, come, let's share with us. Mm -hmm. How was the YouTube scene back when you were 18? And that point of time, you were in poly, was it? Yeah, I was in poly. Okay, wow. Such a long time back. I know, right? It's like over 10 years. 10 years? Yeah, 10 years ago. Um, Back then, YouTube was actually really fun. Like, I mean, I still do enjoy watching videos on YouTube now. But back then, it was less about the drama, less about... um. I don't know. I just feel that YouTube back then, 10 years ago, was a lot of people just sharing what they love, right? But now people do still do that, but everyone's branching out to doing different things. And the people that I used to follow, I don't necessarily follow all of them anymore. Probably they all grew out of whatever content that they were doing. And so so did I. Like... I grew out of, you know, I still enjoy watching makeup videos and beauty videos and all that. But I, as I grew older, I kind of branched out a little bit um, deep to other types of stuff like travel vlogs or travel videos, van life. Um, van life, yeah, you yeah, and your van life. I love my van life, my tiny living. Um, and yeah. So I I do have to, I don't know how to explain how different YouTube was back then, but I definitely enjoyed it more back then than I do now, Mm. if that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, What triggered you? What kind of like pushed you to start your own YouTube channel? Oh, okay. This is a very interesting question. Um, I started, I was watching this YouTuber, uh, She's Bethany Mota, actually. Never heard of her. Yeah, she's this. She's young, much younger than me. And, really? Huh? Really? Yeah, she's much younger than wow, me. Okay. At that time when I discovered her, I was like 19, 18 or 19. Wow, so young. And um, she was probably like 14, 15. Wow. Yeah, and at that time when I discovered and followed her on YouTube, right, she had, she already had probably like 400,000 follow, um, subscribers, like 500,000 oh. subscribers. And what 
intrigued me about her was that she was to me I was like thinking to myself she's so young and she just you know gets all this yeah she's so young she has so many subscribers and she's just so confident in front of a camera just sharing things about makeup or like um how to uh like a like Halloween makeup look or a back to school makeup look or a makeup haul you know like I was thinking to myself like dude if this girl who's 14 15 years old is able to do this just because she enjoys doing like talking about makeup right then why I cannot do the same thing uh-huh. yeah so that's when I decided like you know what I'm just going to like thicken my skin and just step <laughs> And then Taking your skin, but with makeup. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But yeah, yeah like, I just I just thought that I should just tickle my skin and just like start a YouTube channel lah, just for the hell of it. And that was the trigger. But I was, I I, I was too scared to like publish the video. Uh, this video is no longer available. I deleted it because I was so cringy. Oh my god. But. You deleted it. Mm. How could you? Yeah, just, no, just I want to see the that. first one. But after that, um, I had a, f- I have a friend, uh, Nabila. She went over. She had to go overseas to, um, she was going overseas to continue her studies. This is Nabila the, the pianist. Huh? Yes, yes. Nabila ah, the hello, Nabila, Nabila the pianist. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. So she, um, she was graduating or something like that from. A JC, if I'm not mistaken, and she was going to travel or spend about four years in the UK. Wow! I she, can't. She actually spent four years yeah, in the UK. Yeah, studying to wow. get her like music degree. From, ah, if I'm not mistaken. I see. I see. Yeah. So, um, she wanted me because at that time I was really dabbling into makeup, and you know I was mm. very interested in it. And then she wanted me to do her makeup for her graduation or something like that, lah. Uh-huh. But I was unable to make. I was unable to help her. Mm-hmm. So eventually, I decided to tell her like, "Hey," and I think this, if I'm not mistaken, ah, this one she was already in the UK. So it's either I couldn't. It's either she's in Singapore and I couldn't help her do her makeup or she was already in the UK so definitely I cannot tra- go there and do her makeup right yeah. so I told her that okay um, I'm going to do a tutorial for you wow yeah so I said okay you know what I'm going to show you how I do the makeup look so that's when my first makeup tutorial that's why I filmed that hold up hold up so you couldn't do yeah so you actually film yourself yes on how to do that makeup yes so that so she, that she could can follow. replicate it yeah Wow, oh, dedication, eh? Yeah, because I felt very bad. Like she's my one of uh, my like very very old childhood friends. Mm. So, yeah, like I I just don't know why. And then I thought that there was the opportunity for me to like finally start my YouTube channel, lah. So if initially when I uploaded that video, it was private just for her to see. Ah. Yeah. Then after a while, I told myself like, you know what? Like screw it. Let's publish it and and just do it, lah. Yeah. Yeah. Then that's how I started, lah. Oh, interesting story, huh? Yeah, story, story time. Right, and this was still when you were eighteen, right? I think I was eighteen or anything. By this time, we I already met you. Really? Yeah. So probably ah, yeah, okay. nineteen then. So when you met me, you were already a YouTuber. Yeesh. Okay, so during your during that YouTube journey uh, towards where you are today, where is that point of time where you told yourself like? Okay, this is going to be my thing. YouTube is going to be the one that I will put a lot of attention to, a lot of effort to, and I will strive to make better and better videos every time I make videos. Um, mm, well, this is a very tough question. I will say the good part and the bad part. Can okay. Okay, so the good part that made me realize that, oh, I really want to invest my time, my money and my effort. Money in terms of like, like products that I have to buy to talk about and try and use and also the gear, right? It was when um, I started realizing that people were watching my videos. Oh, yeah, like okay. I had, and the people who have been following me from the start, 
Mm. Believe it or not, I have a handful of them who are still following me until today. Wow, shout out to all Tiara's followers. Woo-hoo. Yeah, woo-hoo. Interesting Aye, fact. Where's the button? Button. Uh, too late, too uh, late, too late yay. for another applause. <laughs> hey, I'm rusty, okay, so give me a break. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, interesting fact, I actually work with them. Ah, yeah. Anyone that we can name. So, honey, this is for you. Hey, Ooh! shout out to honey. Yeah. Okay. So, anyway, so that was when that was the part where I realized that these same people kept commenting. Oh my god! Like it's so refreshing to find like a Singaporean YouTuber, like very relatable. Because the truth is, at that time when there was a rise in beauty, and there was a rise in beauty or makeup videos, right from the UK or the US, it was unreal. It's not relatable because their weather is very different. Mm. You know, things that work there don't work here. So people appreciated it. At least that's what I thought. Lah. Uh-huh. Um, so that was the good part about why I decided that I really want to invest my time in it. And the bad part was I, I'm not really proud of this, but I was chasing for numbers. Views. Yeah. Like at this one point, I just kept focusing on the number of subscribers, the number of views, the number of likes because that's YouTube, right? YouTube will make you at that time um, the more the algorithm or if if no algorithm existed back then it was that if you have more subscribers the more and if you have more subscribers likes and comments the more they'll push up your videos mm-hmm. right now the algorithm is kind of weird they don't really push out um like even they don't care if you have a lot of subscribers in a sense because mm. if you don't use the right keywords for example nobody's going to see your video if it's not yeah. relatable or recommended or it's not something that people are looking for at the moment people are not going to find your video and people are not going to watch it yeah. and because of the current way YouTube is set uh, if your followers or your subscribers don't hit that notification bell they will not know probably that you have a new video mm. Yeah, so there's a lot of, at this time, I feel that there's a lot of barriers and limitations to YouTube. And this is something that I noticed also, just random. If your content is not like like revolutionary in a sense whereby it's not fun, it's boring, it's things that people already know about yourself, you know, people are not going to, people are not going to care. Uh-huh. Even your subscribers so like this is just my experience uh. every the moments like my videos the moment everything that has you in it that has our like wedding prep our engagement our wedding etc mm. etc et right? all of those basically life milestones I guarantee you those stuff will work better than the rest of the other content really yeah yeah especially when I'm inside yeah huh I don't know why. I think you're entertaining. I should should appear more in your (laughs) videos. (laughs) Yeah, so so that was the bad part. It was just Uh. the numbers because that was at that time YouTube was just pushing it like, oh, the more subscribers you have, the Mm. more likes you have. Mm -hmm. And it was very unhealthy. That's why I kind of dropped off for a while. Ah, okay. Mm. Okay. Interesting. And talking about skill sets that you have developed over time, you have been on YouTube since 1818. 10 years. And, yeah, wow. 10 years and I'm still at 4,000 4, 4, subscribers. But yeah, at, at this time, I just don't give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> I just post what I like. Yeah. When I like. Oh, and when I like. That's another one. Yeah. Last time, everyone was saying that, oh, um, you know, uh, to make sure that you can succeed. Oh my God, I was part of this YouTube creators thing. The How you can sit, succeed on YouTube is you need to have consistency. You need to have a timetable. You uh. need to have to post. Like if you if you post every Friday, you have if you post on Friday, you must say, I post on every Friday so that people know when you come up. You can try and do that, lah, fine, up to you. But mm. to me, I feel like I'm tired of, I'm yeah. tired of doing that shit. Like I just want to do what I like. Yeah. Yeah. Because 10 years. 10 years is a very long time. Yeah. And for such commitment, uh, of course, you're going to, you're going to probably evaluate a few things and you are at that point where you thought that, uh, you know, I'm just doing this for fun. Yeah. And it's longer like what you set yourself out to Mm. in the beginning. So in the beginning, it was a lot of views uh, chasing, a lot of subscription chasing. Yeah. Now it's just because you 
just want to express yourself. Yeah. Right. But talking about the skill set that you have developed over time, over these ten years, <laughs> what are some of those? Can you share? Mm, skill sets ah. Uh huh. Um, video editing for sure. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty clear cut. Videography, photography. I mean, I'm not the best at it, but um, that's something I realize that people don't know. A lot of people don't know how to do. Mm. Right. Yeah. Um, and of course, it comes with the thing that I'm doing for a living as well. But um, you know, searching for the correct keywords for your title so that it's easy for people to find your content. Um, what else? Ah? And actually, that's pretty much it. Like in terms of skill sets, I would say. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Or like recording. Recording, I think like audio recording, like equipment. Uh-huh. Yeah, like I'm pretty confident that I know the equipment that you need to start like a basic YouTube setup. Yeah. 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 Mm. Yeah, um, I I'm not into YouTube as long as you have been. Mm. Uh, my YouTube journey has only has only been like for three years. Since we got married, right? Yeah, since we got married, uh, I didn't start off as a content creator uh, on YouTube, nor did I do anything on social media. Uh, but I did do blogging for yeah, a while. You did, you yeah, did. I started off as a blogger. I do mostly tech and game reviews. And from there, I thought that YouTube should be my most natural um, face, you know, for, for the next step, the next phase. So that's where I thought that, hey, you know, since I had some video backgrounds before, uh, I do love tech. So I thought that, hey, you know, just, why not just yeah, get out of my comfort zone and start to just record myself. And that's the thing, right? Writing and just posting uh, what I wrote in blogs is really at a point where I'm super comfortable already. And I feel that at that point of time, I was just cruising it. You know, there's no, there's not much challenge for me anymore. And I don't really set out to like challenge myself in that blogging space because yeah it's it's pretty much a routine because you just research and then you write about it and then you uh, proofread it and then you put some images to it make the entire thing more entertaining and then just post it and that's that's for every article but it's totally different in YouTube wow YouTube is like I have to say, honest, this is honest to God, uh, truth. Huh? Creating a video is not easy. For sure. Yeah. People mistake that. I think like to your point, right? About yeah. blogging versus you creating videos and yeah. all this. Back then, when I first started, right? Blogging was also very high. Uh-huh. Right? Uh-huh. And there are a lot of like brands who, um, you know, engage influence bloggers at that at that uh, time yeah. to like do content right and I felt like there was not enough you know people were just trying to make it all the same like all content creators who are regardless whether you are a blogger or you are a YouTuber at that time Instagram was not popping yet lah mm. they will they will see it as the same thing and I yeah. saw it differently because like it takes it takes one thing to put your life out there as a blogger, but it takes a different kind of skill set and a different type of effort and bravery and courage, I feel, to put yourself out there on camera. Yeah. And to be able to articulate like your words and record it and then edit it and then make it palatable for people to consume that. Yeah. You know, it's it's a whole different ball game, And I think at one point, I was very frustrated because I felt that nobody understood that. Uh, yeah, okay. everyone just felt like, oh, you blogger means you're in, you're in blogger, blogger. Oh, I'm a yeah. blogger, I'm a blogger. That time, vlogger was not, it's not vlogger is not a thing. Yeah. 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 And I think when I first started YouTube, I only did like four or five videos 
before I told myself that, oh my God, this is way too much work. So I stopped. I stopped for about a year. So I went uh, to a hiatus for about like good 12 months before I restarted. And during that hiatus, I didn't really look at what I created and how many views there were, how many subscribers there were. It was one random day when I just decided, hey, hey I do have a YouTube video, uh, a YouTube channel. Uh, let's take a look. So I saw, and the videos were doing very well. You know, you got, I mean, in Singapore context, uh, not like global context, right? So the videos were doing well. The first video that I did, it got, yeah, the, I mean, the expectation that I set on that video was pr- probably very low. Uh. But the real-time numbers, it was kind of big deal for me. So I thought, hey, there's something here. You know, maybe I should go back to it and resume. So the next few videos after that, it didn't do well. I don't know what happened. Maybe the algorithm change or whatever. Uh, and until today, I've always had that regret because I did not continue where I stopped. If I had been pushing myself to continue what I was doing, things might work out a bit differently. I'm pretty sure because, yeah, like the numbers were showing, right? But again, honest truth is creating a, a video is not easy. Uh, from A to Z, you need to think about so many things. So if you're doing a tech review, you need to go and do your product research. You need to know what keywords you need to mention in your uh, review. And then comes the gear. You need to make sure that your video quality is all right. Your audio quality is all right. But more than often, people th- seem to think that video quality trims, trumps over everything. But actually it's not. You can have a very sucky video resolution. Uh, but if your audio also sucks, people just turn off your video. You know? Yeah, that's true. So you can have like a very grainy video quite maybe not so good looking video but if your audio is good people still can get by because yeah, I mean what's video without them having to see or uh, to hear right so audio is another thing and then you've got lighting oh my god lighting yeah lighting. <laughs> and then what else you've got uh, your software what software you want to edit your videos with you got your Da Vinci Resolve you got your Adobe Premiere Pro you got your Final time, Cut there's, there's no Da Vinci eh. yeah like, actually maybe have me just I don't know uh, yeah it was around mm-hmm. but it wasn't used as widely as it is today uh, Da Vinci back then was mostly used for color correction mm-hmm. yeah and then speaking of the software itself you need to learn how to edit you need to learn how to uh, do your transitions you need to color correct you need to master your audio you need to know how to do a simple mixing of the audio and I thought that was it but then you got your thumbnail to think of you need to design your thumbnail so when it first appear on people's feet, people will be interested. Hey, that's a very nice thumbnail. Because apparently, human beings, they look at visuals more than they want to read what the heck is the visual about. Yeah. Right? So the entire thumbnail becomes so crucial. And not only that, when you are putting your stuff on YouTube, you got the entire the entire, what do you call it, your textual things that you need to build which involves a lot of SEO, a lot of uh, good, yeah, I mean, keywords, like keywords, keywords is SEO. So you need to do all of this research before things can happen. You have to prepare the back link, the links. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you're doing this just for fun, it's great because you won't care about anything else in the world, right? Because you're just recording yourself and then you're just putting on it, uh, putting on YouTube and then that's the end of it. But, a certain point of time, uh, there will be this push towards you wanting yourself to be discovered. Mm. And that's what I feel is what growth is all about. Because if you are doing the same thing over and over again, then you are probably just stuck at where you are, you know, in that 
circle in that sense. Uh. You're just moving around that small circle. And the only way to move forward, to jump into that bigger circle, is for you to just yeah, go, get out of your comfort zone, push yourself, and grow your skill sets. Mm. Right? And that's what I feel YouTube has done for me for these three years or so. It has developed my video editing, editing skills. Uh, it has developed my delivery skills, you know. And I, I think whenever I have like virtual calls with clients and everything, uh, what I did on YouTube, how I've delivered it, yeah. has a, has helped me I a agree. lot. It has gone a long way. Actually, that's very true. Like I, f- I, I feel that I can attribute my presentation skills through call, right? Like virtual calls because of YouTube. I'm able to, especially when the camera is on, I'm able to yeah. focus on the camera and not and on the people yeah. because that's what we have to do when we are on <laughs> yeah. YouTube, you know? Yeah. We don't look at the viewfinder. Mm. We look straight into the lens and that's what we do for... I totally agree. Yeah. Like our delivery, yeah. like how we speak. Because tech... You, I'm... Since young, I'm known to be someone who speaks incredibly fast. Ah. Yeah, so when I do my own videos, I record them, I can hear myself when I edit and then I know that, okay, you need to slow down. Ah. So every time when I'm presenting or I'm in a call, I will just slow the heck down because chances are that speed that I feel is slow is actually not. Yeah, it's not. Mm. Yeah. I mean, not everyone is as... um or fast. It's as fast as keeping up with every word that comes out from your mouth, right? Mm. And especially if you're talking about something quite heavy, there has to be some nuances in however that you speak la, so that you can drive that point that you're trying to make because everything is like 120 kilometers per hour and yeah, you might just just rap instead, <laughs> right? Which I cannot. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, YouTube yeah, the YouTube space has changed lah. Uh, are you still in love with YouTube as how you were in love back then? I would say no. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah I mean, I enjoy the platform. Mm. I enjoy consuming content from the platform and there's, there's always that, there's always that adrenaline rush of creating a video, uh-huh. you know, and, and posting it to YouTube. There's always that rush. But I'm maybe I'm going to sound like I'm making excuses, but to really drive the point of how much effort it actually takes to create a video, right? I feel that I stop or my frequency drop or I quote unquote loss interest in a certain way because I kind of got sick of the chasing numbers and trying to figure out like like trying not to be FOMO you yeah. know just trying to be trendy right mm. and another one is my work my full time job takes up a lot of my time yes and it's very tiring like y'all have no idea eh? like even create sitting down and doing a podcast we don't even have to set up a camera mm. but just thinking about creating something after we've used like almost 80-90% of our brain juice at mm. work is very tiring. Yeah. You just, and this is just podcast and anything and Karun, bless him, he's the one who edits all of our podcasts incredibly well and he does it super efficiently. Um, and that's just mixing audio. But like for our YouTube videos, it's just, just imagine like the whole process from ideating what we want to do to preparing which means setting up the camera setting up for Karun setting up his PC or computer setting up the lights for me it's like bringing out the table setting Mm. out the camera in the room bringing in the lights preparing (laughs) my makeup products all and plugging in every single thing that needs to be plugged in yeah Actually filming it, if I'm filming a makeup tutorial, right? Jeez Louise, that can take us or take me about three hours from setup to doing the actual video, doing my makeup, outro, posing, (laughs) and then like take out my to-do and then shutting everything down, Uh taking down the tear down of everything. All of these things, right guys, actually take 
a lot of time. And just to be clear, we edit our own videos. We yeah. don't have any assistant. We don't have any video editor that we pay. No, yeah. everything is just edited by us. So you, I know that like a lot of those bigger YouTubers, they all, they all have editors on. All they have to do, right, is yeah, just pick yeah. up the camera and shoot. And then yeah. the editors edit for them. Sorry, like, that's in an ideal world where people are incredibly rich or they are really very successful successful on YouTube. Yes, but that's yeah. just not us. And that's the same for other smaller creators out there, regardless whether they are doing TikTok video, YouTube video, Instagram TV, Instagram video, they are all just doing it like by themselves. So And also yeah. they are doing that as a full time job. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the difference. Uh, like we just wanted to really make it clear that, you know, yeah, you know it's, not, put, it's not as easy. La. Or rather when we are not creating content, mm. it's not because we are lazy. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> it's not because you're no lazy. Time. It's because there's no time. Seriously, yeah. like, Karin and I just, there's so many times where like, you know, um, what time am I? Uh, maybe like, like in the morning, 10 a.m., Han, I think today after work, I'm going to film a video. Yeah, the premonition know? comes like yeah. super early. In yeah, the it's like that feeling. Like, okay, you know what? I'm pumped. I'm going to film a video. And then like when 7 o'clock comes, I'm just like, Han, I think I don't want to film video. I'm yeah. tired. Yeah. Then after that, that or sometimes I'll ask him like, Han, um, should I still film? Then he's like, if you don't want to, then never mind. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's it's like that. La. I, yeah. I mean, I enjoy it. I, I really do. And that's why I'm still continuing it because I do feel that um. Right now, my content has changed and evolved a little bit, mm. especially since I started wearing the hijab. I feel like I could use that to help other sisters who are like are on their own journey mm. to wear the hijab. And that's my purpose. Uh. I just wanted to make sure that some of my content is actually helpful in that sense. Right. Yeah. Uh, I also have to say that... Uh, when I stop YouTubing for a while, it is because of the process. I just found it to be super hard to put everything together, to uh, film and then edit. You know, the entire process is just way too much work. And I realized that once I have found my own formula, it gets way easier. Yeah. The only thing is that, the only thing that will stop me from doing any filming or recording is whether I'm too tired or not. I think that's the only thing. If I have the energy, I will do it. Uh, and because of the formula that I have found for myself, it makes things a bit more streamlined. It makes things a bit more simpler in a way where right now, I don't have to set things up like how I used to anymore. You know, because back then, I re like it's like you. I have to take everything out. Yeah. I have to put things together and then make sure the framing is correct, the composition is correct, the lighting is correct, the mic is correct. And worse, because last time when we when we first used to do vi uh, YouTube videos, our gears really totally suck. Yeah, we had uh, really, sh not shitty lah, but it was just not, okay, it's not shitty gear. It was just, um, it's there's a lot of hindrance. Yeah, it's not like, we did not prepare yeah. to make it work for us. Yes. And that preparation, that word preparation, mm. essentially means investing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. First is, of course, if you want to make your production value higher, of course, you have to invest. But then again, I have seen many successful YouTubers who don't even care so much about gear. All they do is just to use their handphone, their mobile phone, plug in a mic or maybe use an external mic, uh, have some simple like, form of lighting, just enough so that they won't appear super dark on their video feed. Because let's face it, the video cams on phones these days, it's really, really good. It's becoming way, way too good. You know, like your iPhones are really very high quality video uh, recording capability so if you guys want to start YouTube uh, yes of course if you have budget and you can invest but if you don't have the budget you can just use like what I've just mentioned just now you know it's super simple 
don't need to think of a lot about what uh, you need to set up. Don't be like us. We, I think we spend way too much time setting things up. Yeah. And you you can see there's a lot. There's like probably thousands of uh, YouTubers who does really well without spending much on gear. Uh, but of course, if you were to compare their videos, you know, because it's like super basic and uh, with someone who is already super big, if you compare their quality of the videos, it, it's like comparing day and night. Nah. You can really see an obvious difference. But that's the thing. It doesn't stop their followers from watching their videos time and again. Yeah. yeah. It's like, again, I would have to say it's like related relatability mm. to whatever people are looking for at the moment. Yeah. 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 It's it's it, it's just the content wise. It's just the way it is like I can do what I want and post like a um, makeup tutorial with like purple eyeshadow, but people are not going to be interested in it because they don't want to wear purple eyeshadow. Or yeah. it's not a thing. It's not a trend right now. So yeah. it's not their fault either because mm. they're not interested. So for me, I'm at that point in my life or in my YouTube ish life where I'm just like. I'm using it as a space to create content because I like to create them. I I want to produce something and it's fun for me. It's an ex- it's a form of escapism for me. Whether or not people watch and find it, um, yeah, whether or not people watch is a different thing. But if I'm able to create content that is helpful, then that's even better, right? Yeah, that's yeah, true. So, yeah, I don't know. I just don't care. <laughs> like, no, I just, like, yeah. really, really, I think I had this conversation with Karim before. I said, I, I'm so tired of looking at my subscriber count. Mm. I, yeah. you know, I just don't want to look at it anymore. And then he just told me, like, then just post whatever the hell you want, lah. Like, mm. whenever you want, like, uh, you know, like, you don't have to, uh, like, I didn't, I do, got no video for this Friday. Like, Screw it. Just, yeah. whenever, just do it. And, Remember, I still remember this. It's from Peter McKinnon. Mm. He did he he did a video talking about this. Uh. He said like, I can't remember exactly what that video was about. But all I remember was when I watched, after I watched that video, I felt really inspired to just create and that's it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. he talked about, you know, how everyone is just so obsessed with how many subscribers, how many videos you can put out, how consistent you are, what kind of titles you have. And nobody cares about the essence of creating, which is like passion. Ah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so after that, I just like, if I don't want to post, I don't post. Ah. <laughs> like, <Yeah>. bye. <laughs> like, you yeah. know. So, yeah. For me, I, 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 I'm the sort of person who doesn't really care about my subscriber count. If it's rising, it's great. If it's a lot, it's a bonus. If there's a lot of views, wonderful. Okay, wait, but... So think about, never mind, we'll talk about subscribers. Maybe we'll okay. touch on it later. Okay. So now it's all about me creating the content and I just like to see the end result. When I put the things together, when I look at the quality that I've uh, put into, the effort that I've put into, and when it comes like a finished product, I like to see that. And it just tells me that, uh, okay, this there's some parts that I can improve on. Okay, there are some parts that I'm very proud of. So, I don't know whether this is vanity or not. Uh, probably it is. It is like looking, it's like dressing up and pimping up and then looking myself at the mirror, you know. <laughs> but, yeah, it's for, it's just for my own. Because I see that, oh, okay. Oh, that's how I, I talk. Uh, oh, this, this part sometimes I a bit funny. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I, I, don't, I didn't know I can achieve such a uh, Comics, but um, where 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 the, wah 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 wah, yeah. So yes, for me it's the end result, and I I especially uh like it or maybe it just warms the cockles of my heart, right? Mm-hmm. When people appreciate what I put up. You know, like when I talk about certain things uh, and they don't really care about what I say or what I am talking about. Maybe because everyone has their own 
opinions, right? But the quality of the delivery, the quality of the video, because yeah, they yeah whatever that they say, whatever things that they appreciate on what they see, and that one just warms my heart. I like, agree. Oh, Especially when the content that you put out is helpful for people. Ah, yeah. I think that really, really sets the tone for, like the like it really motivates me. I feel exactly. Yeah. Like for you and me, we do a lot of product reviews, and I think one of the main aims is to tell our subscribers or people who just watch our videos how they can save their money from mm. buying things which they probably should not buy. Yeah. Right. Correct. Yeah. And just just ran on a random note, mm. like on subscribers, I think we've recently found out that for both our channels, the people who watch our videos, they are not our subscribers. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. So the subscriber numbers really don't care. Don't, yeah, doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. Yeah. yeah. And I would, <sighs> sorry, this is like occupational hazard, but it's, it goes the same with follower growth on Instagram. Yeah. Mm. But I, at the same time, I think we also just have to appreciate that people take the effort to click on that subscribe button. Oh yeah lah, for right? sure, for sure. But it's, it's at the same time, uh, the data is also telling us that whenever we post new videos, it doesn't really mean that, say you got like 2,000 views on the videos. Uh, doesn't mean that 2,000 comes from the, our subscriber count. It just comes from everywhere else. Mm, like yeah, maybe yeah. the video got recommended somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. But yeah, I just want to also take the opportunity to thank all our subscribers. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for like put uh, like stay on and listen to me ramble on and on about yeah. certain products or certain thoughts or yeah whatever. And. Yeah, I think for me, it's more of like my subscribers who have been following me since the very beginning. Wow. And Loyal and fans. No, I wouldn't say fans. Like I, I just appreciate them because they were the ones who supported me when mm. I was nothing. I mean, yeah. I'm still nothing. Lah, but, you know, they are the ones who spe- spare their time to mm. watch me talk about things that I like. Yeah, and yeah. you know give me support leave comments and even chat with me today until like on Instagram so yeah even though I don't look at my subscriber count as much as I used to anymore I think a lot of my especially the first few subscribers that I had I I value them a lot and I still remember them until today Yeah. so yeah So, yeah. so thank you all. Big shout out to all of our super fans who have uh, followed us through yeah. our um, YouTube journey, our podcast journey, yeah. our Instagram journey. You know, some people like message me and say like, oh, I follow you since before you kawin. Yeah, or like so before sweet, right? you get engaged. Until now, you know, like until seeing you berhijab and everything. Hmm. Then, I, then like, it just really, yeah, it just makes me feel very... Yeah. Um, appreciative true yeah so But, thank you yeah I think to wrap things up I just want to reiterate that had it not be uh, had it not been for YouTube I'll still be that very um, very underdeveloped <laughs> skilled sad kind of person who just probably live like uh, under a coconut husk kind of person. Uh. Wow, yeah. really? Uh, that really? Had it, not, had it not been for YouTube, uh, there's a lot of things which I think doesn't propel me or doesn't develop me to be the person I am today. Not just on character, but more on the technical side of things, the skill sets. Mm. Because some of the things are really being valued at work because of whatever experience that I have, like whatever exposure that I have with, with you know, camera gear stuff. And yeah. So, I would say the same for me as well. Mm. I think if it's not for YouTube, I wouldn't have landed a couple of jobs. <laughs> yeah. And I wouldn't have, yeah, I wouldn't have gotten to a career 
lev- where I'm at right now and I try I always don't believe this but I guess it could be true but I do feel that because I I mentioned that I do my own YouTube videos it gives me an edge every single time when mm. not every single time but when I'm I'm in an interview it's always a conversation starter yes it's like oh you have a true. YouTube video yeah. like oh you have YouTube channel yeah and yeah I think I wouldn't have been offered the opportunities that I have in terms of my career and other opportunities elsewhere if mm. it was not for YouTube because it was from YouTube that I you know dabbled into social and Instagram and yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah, and I wouldn't be able to do all of the things that I I, I got the opportunity to do now. Yeah. So, do you consider YouTube to be a factor in your character growth? Character growth, I don't know. Eh. What do you think? <laughs> I, I feel like I'm still the same. <laughs> I think it has helped me tremendously. Really? Yeah. Character. I don't. Know, I just feel that I'm. I feel that I'm more articulate because of YouTube. Articulated. Articulated. Ha <laughs> ha uh. Jokes. Yeah. Mm. But character... I don't know. I For me lah, going on YouTube, I just always remind myself, or ever since I've been on YouTube, I always remind myself to be kind. Mm. Because people are putting themselves out there and so are you. So yeah. it always pays to be kind. True. So yeah. I don't know about character growth, but that's just it for me. Do you think I? Do you think I'm different? Different how? Like, no, right? I feel like I'm the same. I don't feel like you, I grow. Every day different. Ah, you want to watch them now? Okay. All right, you guys. Thank right, you guys. for listening to this episode. We hope that, um, yeah, you kind of get a little bit of insight on why. Like our journey on YouTube. Uh, and mm-hmm. also maybe it gives you a a window towards your, I don't know, like maybe a potential uh, project that you might want to do on YouTube. Maybe open up your own channel or anything. It might give you a, a preview uh, on what's going to be happening. Yeah. So yeah. our links are available at the description of this episode. Thank you guys so much for listening to us, supporting us. Yeah. And we hope to see you guys soon in our next podcast, inshallah. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy. Yes, very and important, guys. If we'll, you have kids, yeah. don't go and... Go to crowded places. Yeah, and then bring back all the things that you're not uh-huh. supposed to bring back. So take Think care, guys. Okay. Bye. See ya. Bye.